Hey guys, it's Stacy here. Welcome to my channel, Life's a Project, where I like to share my everyday life projects with you. So today I thought it'd be fun to share with you the seeds that I purchased for this year's Cut Flower Garden. I ordered these seeds from Botanical Interest. This was in the packaging first time ordering from them and I was really impressed with their packaging. I got a couple of free gifts. I think I share that on my Instagram. I got a collector's pin and a free packet of lettuce seeds. So I thought that was really nice, but I love that they had such a large variety of the flowers that I wanted and their pricing was really good. Most of these around that $2 mark. Now with my order, I also ordered these poppy seeds and these I'm gonna use in a different project. So um, stay tuned for that video, but I'm not going to really use them as a part of my cut flower garden. Now I've grown flower seeds many times in the past. I usually just sprinkle some seeds down in containers and just let them grow and do their thing. And I enjoy them that way, just in containers. And I'll place those containers in different areas of my property, around my mailbox post, maybe on the porch, not really growing them as cut flowers. So this year I thought it'd be fun to grow flowers in two of my green middle containers that I have in my backyard and do a small scale cut flower garden because I really do feel that many of us would like to grow flowers for cutting to make arrangements or bouquets to enjoy in our home or to make a few for family, friends, the neighbors, whoever, you know, but many of us may not have the space or the resources to do a large cut flower garden or have the time to take care of it all. So that's why I really wanted to share my plans for this year's cut flower garden in containers because I really do think that most of you probably do have a couple of large containers um, around or maybe several small containers or maybe just a section of your raised bed garden that you would like to grow flowers in and that we can kind of do this project together. So what flowers are great for cut flowers? And really you can purchase whatever flowers you want, but really the best way to answer that question is with doing research. I've read many professional grower websites, blogs, and these people grow flowers for a living. It's their business. They know what they're talking about. And many of them would have a list of their top five or 10 favorite cut flowers. And then you start to see a pattern and most of them list many of the same flowers. Things like snapdragons, zinnias, sunflowers, straw flowers, cosmos, just many of these. And really, they also mention things like dahlias, lilies, and tulips. With those, you have to buy bulbs and tubers, and that can be a lot more work, cost a lot more money than just buying a seed. So I really think for a basic or beginner cut flower garden, I think it's best to stick with flower seeds. Now the great thing is that I can directly sow all of these seeds in the soil when it's time in my area based on the instructions on the seed packet. Now I can also start these inside underneath grow lights to get earlier blooms, but if you don't have a grow light system, uh, you can just do the winter sowing method. Now I do have a small um, grow light system set up that I shared last year in a video, but this year I wanted to do the winter sowing method. So I share with you just a few weeks ago, me starting many of these seeds using that method. So if you haven't seen that video yet, guys, go back and check it out to see more about what I'm talking about. Now, some of these, like the sunflowers and the zinnias, you can start them ahead if you'd like, and I still might because the sunflowers and the zinnias are the two that I did not start using the winter sowing method because they're such fast growers. You can just really directly sow them right into the soil and you'll have blooms pretty early. So I'm not sure yet, I still may do the sunflowers and zinnias using the winter sowing method, but I wanted to do it in my second round when I start things like tomatoes and peppers and basil, some of those more tender plants that like to grow after your last frost date. So really it's just your personal preference if you want to start them by directly sowing them into the ground when it's time in your area, or you start them ahead using the winter sewing method or under grow lights. It's really whatever you want to do. So now let's take a closer look at the seeds, the zinnias, California giants, 
and annual blooms summer to frost they get two to four feet tall the blooms four to six inches and look at the color guys so beautiful now i've grown zinnias in the past or grew some last year in a video and they're just a smaller variety these are the giant ones so i'm really excited to see these and how they do so here on the back recommended for sewing outside also when to start inside so just always look on your packet for what to do and how to grow each one of these flowers next here is the sunflower this one is a dwarf variety elves blend so a blend of sunflowers a shorter plant you can see a multi-branched shorter plant so these are ideal for containers to use as cut flowers so you cannot use those big giant sunflowers as cut flowers so make sure you're buying the right seeds these are also annual they like full sun blooms summer to frost see 16 to 24 inches tall so that is what you want to purchase and here's some information on the back as well next here i have these cosmos double click blend an annual they like full sun blooms summer to frost 24 to 36 inches tall and i just love the colors and these double click blend you can see they're just full of petals nice and fluffy these are just so pretty and here's some information on the back and the good thing about these cosmos as well as these zinnias these are more of a cut and come again type of flower where you cut the blooms and they will grow back for you keep producing blooms um, flowers like the sunflowers they usually will just um, have a bloom that you cut and they don't keep producing so sometimes it's a really good idea to plant a, a row of sunflowers and then wait a week or so and then uh, plant some more so that you'll have blooms throughout the season so next here are these snapdragon tall maximum blend and i love the colors red yellow pink purple and white the bees love them and you can see here these are a perennial they like full sun to part shade bloom heaviest in cool weather 30 to 36 inches tall they produce these bloom spikes they're great for cut flowers now these are perennial these are annual now on the back here you can see perennial in zone five and warmer so i live in kentucky i'm a zone six so these are perennial in my area so we'll see if they come back for me next year now it does say when to sow them outside and usually a lot of perennials they like a cold period so you can see four to six weeks you want to sow them before your average frost date so you don't have to wait till after your last frost date to sow these So next here are these straw flowers. These are called Swiss Giants Blend. And guys, I just love the colors. And these make great dried flowers as well to use in projects. So that is one of the reasons I am growing these this year. Perennial, a tender perennial, grown as annual. Full sun, blooms summer to frost, 36 to 40 inches tall and this is a tender perennial so it says to sow outside two to four weeks after your average last frost date so a little bit different than the snapdragon and you can see here it's a perennial but only in zones eight through ten so it would not be a perennial in my area next here are the carnations and these are your classic cut flower these are so great these are a perennial they like full sun blooms at summer 18 inches tall 18 inches wide and these on the back see so outside one to two weeks before your average last frost date so you'll sow these before your average frost just like the snapdragons and these you can see perennial in zone six through nine so they are a perennial in my area and i just love the flower color of these that pretty like yellow and pink and white and you can see this one has like a striped and then the red so i'm really excited about these carnations so the last flower seeds i have here are these canterbury bells storybook blend and i just love the colors and look at the shape they look like little bell shaped blossoms and these are long lasting cut flower 
These are the only biannual. They like full sun to part shade, blooms spring to summer, 24 to 36 inches tall and these are a biannual which means they usually just last for two years and you can see here they're biannual in zones five through eight so i'm six here in kentucky so i'm good and the only bad thing about a biannual you may only get blooms that second year it's like the first year it really just produces those leaves that foliage and you see flowers the following year so either way i'm just really excited about growing these and having these cut flowers either this year or next year so guys there you have it the flowers that i want to grow in this year's cut flower garden so i hope this video was helpful to you if you want to give this project a try yourself and i know it's not that many flowers but really guys when you're only growing in a couple of containers you really need to pare it down and give those plants room to grow and next year maybe you can expand and do more containers and that would be really fun so if you have any questions or comments place those down in the comment section below and i hope you will subscribe to my channel you can follow me on instagram and give me a thumbs up if this video was helpful so guys i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one have a blessed day i cannot wait for spring bye